that I did not get a ticket and I'm innocent. <laughs> Good. Innocent, proven, guilty as we stroll title on. Title the podcast and, right there. Yeah, we should have changed <laughs> the title to that. <laughs> Welcome on in everyone. Episode, what did I put it as? I think it's 28. Episode 28, a material change it took place in TGC's Platinum Tour this week. Hopefully everyone's doing well. We're going to go over the weekend. We're going to talk about NHL coming back starting tomorrow. TGC Tour recap, our typical community corner. A match, one of Killer B's match play invitational. And then we have a weekly preview on tap. First, let's go around the horn here. Kick it off with our um, panel myself and we'll kick it to my right on your screen mr mad moose moosey what's going on you're wearing the uh red Sox uni how are the yeah. socks doing uh five one bottom of the fifth uh love that so elimination game tonight they can send the rays packing who are world series favorites for a decent chunk of the season to be honest and, yeah yeah nice so that if they win tonight they advance correct agreed or the, correct. Uh, Long looks day. Like you, looks like you get some high ceilings there. Is that that's it, the new yeah. block apartment, right? It's yeah. Nice. So we're uh, I'm in an attic. So <laughs> if I turn my camera around, uh, it it gradually let's get let's gets get a preview. Is it? Can you turn? Uh, around? I mean, just I could, but then I gotta get it right back in the position. All right. All right. We'll, we'll we'll leave you and, be. His setup is, uh, it, it's quite amazing. He sent me a picture. So right now. It looks very yeah. professional from this angle. What he's <laughs> looking at, it, Kill it's right. very Kill I'll send different. you a Snapchat right now. Oh, be, God. I'm not even, mode. I don't know if I can look. I just spent probably five hours reorganizing my entire desk this past weekend and cleaning everything. It is pristine. Yeah, uh, like, yeah you're not going to like this on, then. like the cleanest desk or one of those uh, Instagrams. So, just for the viewers at home, so I have I have three end tables that I'm working with. Oh, one has Lord. my Wi-Fi and my PC tower. The other has one monitor. The other has the other monitor. Uh, and you're like, wait a minute. What are you doing with your mouse and keyboard? Well, I have a cooler. And then on top of the cooler, there's uh, the box that my microphone came in and an Xbox controller box that is being used as my mouse pad for the time being until I figure out what desk I want to get. Oh yeah, how's the, how many tweets we need? Uh, let's see. <laughs> I I did get one. Shout out, uh, beers with tribe gaming. Let's one go the other day. So let's see. Yep. Where we're at Getting here. those bigger names, you just need oh, Nade yeah. Shot now. Tag at Nade Shot and TGC tours. Oh, I I have. <laughs> Ask him if he wants to collab on a desk. <laughs> we're we're at thirty. We're at, that's not a bad idea. Or 35, so 499,965. Ooh, all right. All right. Hey, uh, Henny, Samo, Wolfie, anyone in the chat, follow Mad X Moose on Twitter. Help him get to that half a million retweets goal. Pin tweet. Just to uh, rub it in, too, I tweeted at Lumia the other day. Or not Lumia, sorry. I tweeted at Uplift Desk the other day, and I was like, hey, I'm getting pretty close. Like, if you guys just want to, you know, <laughs> yeah, you you're threatening, the process you're here, threatening slide into my DMs. <laughs> yep, they can slide into my DMs. We can expedite the shipping process. And they had the gall to like the tweet. Uh, oh, so. man. Hughes here in the chat is one of our old NHL buddies, a.k.a. Henny. Glad to yeah, see you here. Henny. Glad that you're listening in. Samo and Wolfie, we've, we've both got to meet over the past year. Thank you for tuning in so far. Thank you for anyone who may be tuning in on YouTube. I did tinker with some stuff around here, so I do have to adjust that camera there. Let's kick it over to Bipolar Bear, our third member of the podcast. Look at that gorgeous smile right below me on your screen. How are you doing, Bear? Doing good. Just got back from a board meeting, doing a lot of work. Uh, I, I will say one of the Cubs is down here right now. She's working on a uh, party for me. I don't know how this is going to work, but you can uh, see she is currently uh, on the job. Yeah, she she's <laughs> currently uh, making me a time. fake dinner right now. So Ooh. that's why if if I uh, continue to mute and go on and off, it's because she's uh, 
talking. <laughs> yeah. Dad, dad priorities, d- dad takes priorities for sure, but we appreciate you ju- joining us and uh, glad you could come in as well as Dobie Diesel in the house. Welcome on in Dobie. Um, yeah, let's kick it off to the weekend what, recap. What, I was going to say, what have you been up to, Kilbred? What have I been up to? I um, I spent a lot of time cleaning my desk over the weekend. That was kind of my big goal. I'm going to try to get one last golf round in this uh, next upcoming weekend. But this was probably the first weekend that I really like just took off in mm-hmm. the longest time. So that was nice to kind of get a little bit of a mental reset. Slept a bunch and I still... Still, uh, still overslept this morning and was late for work, so that was that was fun. <laughs> there you so, go. thought we caught up on sleep by getting like nine <laughs> hours on Saturday into Sunday, but that still wasn't enough to. Uh... Samo, thank you for the retweet. Appreciate yeah. it. Oh, hey, oh, we got another yeah. one. Ninety-nine thousand four hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred sixty-four. Hey, oh, <laughs> we're getting there, baby. One by one. This is gonna be like the break. biggest community achievement. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, but I did download. He's gonna uh, go out. He's gonna go out and spend two hundred dollars on a desk, and then next day, yeah, something's that's what, that's gonna take off. It's just gonna yeah. go viral. Yeah, one of these days it will. Um, I did download PGA on uh, PlayStation. That is free now Ooh. for those on PlayStation. If you don't have it, I do have a PlayStation uh, that I just purchased, but I wasn't gonna purchase the game because I already have a couple copies of it. Um, so if you're interested in PGA 2K21, it is free on PlayStation Plus at the moment for this month. So make sure you download it and take advantage of it. Um, it will be the golf game for another eight months. So you're getting the best golf game out there, um, arguably for the next eight months. So that's kind of a cool perk if you have a PlayStation. Um, so I did play a little bit of that, just kind of goofed around and then uh, played some Madden games. Played some Madden, getting into the bespoke Fan, uh, football league and watched a lot of football um one thing i didn't watch but did you guys happen to see the uh fury wilder fight at all i saw highlights i'm upset i didn't watch the whole fight mr tyson fury wins again and look at his antics during the fight what is he doing bears oh. like this. Oh, i did not see that oh my music God. is just great a little brad marchand action what is going on? Is this TOS? <laughs> oh, is he licking ESPN the blood? ESPN Deportes. Or did he just, did he just want to lick him? <laughs> Look at all the blood on him, too. They're yeah. just soaked in blood. This guy's a psycho. You know he went out clubbing after? Did you see something else I didn't know besides that? What you just brought up. Did you know he was like a large, large guy for... Oh, yeah. Oh, let me, uh, sorry for the blood. He was like 300 something pounds. Now he's down to whatever. This was the KO. Look at this angle. And say. This is brutal. No night. Boom. Like a sack of potatoes. Uh, uppercut lands right No, there. I think he's still probably 300. He was probably like four or 500. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have to look. But yeah, he lost like 100 something pounds to uh, just for his own well being. And then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm oh, still man. scarred from him licking him. Yeah, I know. Wasn't <laughs> oh, hey, like yeah, there was a picture. Yeah. That is your current heavyweight champion of the world right there, Mr. Yeah. Tyson Fury, <laughs> yeah. knocking out the best puncher you uh, that we've arguably ever seen in Deontay Wilder. So that was uh, that was really cool. But uh, the story of Tyson Fury really is something crazy. So, um, you know, he did lose a ton of weight, but he still is kind of, um, you know, a unorthodox size for a um, heavyweight champion. So, oh yeah, kind of cool seeing. Um, but I, I didn't actually watch the fight. I don't really pay for too many fights. That's probably one I would have had interest in, but I did not um, make the purchase. Figured I'd ask you guys. Um, weighed in at two seventy seven is what um, the bar rat said. Damn. Um, he was also a massive drug addict and left fighting because of it. Yeah, so oh, th- there's a couple uh, more that. insight from the chat there. Samo and Barat, appreciate it. Um, welcome on in Crown Slayer as well. And yeah, still a little plump, but nothing wrong with that, especially we can knock out uh, Deontay Wilder. Right. Um, someone, a couple teams that couldn't uh, get a win this weekend, no surprise there, the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns. Bear, any thoughts on the Browns? (laughs) (laughs) 
There so it is. Let, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about officiating. All right. Now, there's many things that go on in 60 minutes of football. There's a lot of time to where they had the lead and they had the ball with three minutes, a little over three minutes, and they don't have Nick Chubb out there. So that's a problem. But the worst pass interference call I've ever seen where Mike Williams is grabbing our fourth string cornerback, grabbing his jersey as he's falling down. Yeah, there it is. As he's falling down, that's pass interference on us. <laughs> Defensive that was a, PI. <laughs> that was a fourth down play. And because of it, the Chargers get the first down. They end up driving down and scoring. I must say, I at the end of the day, the Chargers look like one of the best teams in the NFL. So actually losing to them on paper is not a bad loss. Browns go to three and two. Still a very, very scary team all around. Nick Chubb looks like the potentially the best running back in the NFL after that game. He, he looked fantastic. And the, I mean, I think the only bad part is the defense didn't look great, but the Chargers offense is fantastic. So mm-hmm. in, in a, a nutshell, you got to be encouraged with how well they played the Chargers, but to lose in such a fashion is always such a kick in the nuts. It's a weird spot for, again, I, I don't consider myself like one of those diehard Browns fans where, you know, every single game uh, I'm down in the Muni lot, which is like the big party lot. And, and I like to look at things from that longer perspective of, holy crap, the Browns have been awful for my entire lifetime. Yeah. And to sit there and and you're upset that you're three and two after five weeks and your two losses are to the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes and to the Los Angeles Chargers and Justin Herbert on the road where you had the lead in the fourth quarter, but you just can't close it out. Mm -hmm. Like being a Patriots fan, you go into the fourth quarter if you've got a lead in previous years, you're like, chalk it up. It's a it's win. All done. It's all... To where Browns fans still, you go into the fourth quarter and you're up 10, you're up 14, you're going, how are we going to piss this away? Hmm. So so that mindset's still there, but it's nice that they are, Um, it, it's nice that they're turning it around in, in that, you know, you can watch a game and go, oh, this this isn't complete garbage. Yeah, and um, yeah, it, it just I'm a little bit over. <laughs> yeah, it's it circles to the other the other sad franchise. I I, I hate yeah. to like pound this on is it, so but rough. The Detroit Lions score a two point conversion. Dan Campbell has the cojones with 37 seconds left to go for two, go up one on a division rival. The Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota, the team doesn't look that bad. The Lions really don't look that bad. They're 0-4. They just got beat by a 66-yarder by Justin Tucker. And sure enough, 37 seconds is a little too much. And unfortunately, the Vikings drive right down the field and kick a field goal. (laughs) And win that game. So, Did you see how the Lions got the ball back? just before that I didn't I didn't so the the Vikings are running the ball to to just chew the clock and they fumble it on their own 25 some something yeah where you're just watching it and you can't believe my goodness i think it was alexander madison so maybe you if you look up madison fumble m a t t i s o n and you're just sitting there going oh my yeah here it is yeah. so just under 2 minutes third and 7 yeah you know you're probably not getting it but hold them up hold up oh, balls out balls out and detroit has it with and again from from a you know suffering franchise 
Yeah. You're well, sitting I mean, there they would have got the Lions ball back fan. with a minute and change. Yeah, and it's like, all right, finally something's going our way. Get the You're ball back. You're sitting there going, they're they're going to overturn this. Minnesota's going to punt the ball. You have to burn, you know, they don't have any timeouts. Yeah. So you're getting the ball back on your side of the field and you don't have that much time. But for whatever reason, the call stayed. And as a Lions fan, you're like, oh, my goodness, we finally got one. Yeah. And you can see as a Minnesota fan, another franchise who's gone through it, you're going, oh, my God, here we go again. And then they get the two point conversion. That was just a painful game for both franchises yeah and minnesota got to pull one out this time yeah minnesota needed it desperately one and three and they kind of haven't looked that bad doing it too so it was like what's going on and speaking of minnesota yeah narwhal in the house he had to have a big smile on his face watching all oh, those typical lions thank you for the free win bulldog in the house as well <laughs> to run home run by tampa red sox are up five three now Red Sox Tampa. up five three. Damn. Um, Tampa coming back, making a push. Oh, uh, any other nice, uh, nice thoughts five, on uh, baseball? Uh, what what's going on on on, on those series moves? You, you probably the um, best person to go for a breakdown. I would imagine you've been watching the closest or bear. I don't know how much baseball you've been watching. Yeah, I, I mean, I've I've been watching the Red Sox. Baseball. Same. I know the Astros have a chance to eliminate the Cubs in their next game. Uh, Dodgers. Let me check in the Dodgers Giants for Rob. They play tonight, I believe. Series so should be one one or two one. Where'd it go? Yeah, so they start at nine thirty. This is so half hour Moose checks now. his phone. Series series is one one. Uh. And then Dodger or White Sox Astros got postponed. Not sure why. Rob did send in this clip earlier in the week, so we'll show that. Okay, maybe he didn't. There it is. So this is a 3 0 count in the first inning. And I don't know, is that Buster Posey? Is he still playing in the league? Yeah, Buster Posey. He goes Yabo right into the water. Or, I don't know if it goes water. Oh, yep, took a bouncing in. Boom! I take I I would have ventured to guess that the Giants took this game, but uh, yeah, Giants get a uh, early lead and maybe it looks like it's one one now. So uh, yeah, I don't really have any insight. Didn't even know what this. Didn't even know the Red Sox played tonight. So mm -hmm. that's how much baseball I'm watching. But, yeah, Boston anyways. Marathon Day. But, yeah, Boston anyways. Marathon Day. Of course, that got put, that's oh, usually oh, what oh, oh, that, got that got pushed back. Uh, Boston Marathon. Day? When? Yeah, the the marathon was today. No, it wasn't, was it? Yeah. I didn't even know that. It usually marathons you, you, in uh, like May or April. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um but you didn't have anyone like running through your driveway or anything? Not up in Tuxbury, 30 <laughs> miles north of the city. Was it really today? Yeah, it's a 26 mile race, Kilbride. Um yeah. yeah, it was it was today. Oh, no shit. Good for them. I'm like 90 uh, 90 sure. Yeah, <laughs> six months later. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what else we got in here? White Sox, not Cubs. The Cub, the Cubs aren't in the playoffs. They stink. All their players no, are in I the didn't, playoffs. Schwarber, Rizzo, and yeah, Schwarber. Well, no, not Rizzo anymore. Thank God. Oh yeah, he was. There There's right. a crazy play in the uh, White Sox Astros game with Yasmani Grandal running. Probably a good foot or two inside the first base line. Oh, I saw that. That was causing some controversy. I didn't see that. It, it was, and um, again, shout out to the actual, hold on, my daughter's going ham on her kitchen set right 44 now. 44 under miss cut for Narwhal feels bad. Uh, shout out to no. the broadcast crew for MLB Network because they were explaining uh, the way the rule is written that it's more for the defense than the offense. So, yeah, here it is. Watch where he is when this ball hits him. Right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you can't. Do Two feet on the grass, basically. 
They said not Back... interference. Oh, really? They, they did literally buy the book and they ex- they defended the call of not interference. They did. They said wow. as soon as the ball. And this is where I was like really confused. They said when it's batted, you can run anywhere. But then uh, what's the purpose of the baseline? Yeah. In case you forget where you're going. Yeah, so it it was very confusing because you see it hit him and he just shrugs it off. Like he looks over his right shoulder. Yeah. When they show. Okay, thank you for making me bread. Um, I I have literally no food in my apartment. I can use bread. Oh, yeah. He just like looks over his right shoulder like good. And it was (laughs) it was a no call. That's incredible. And that changed the outcome of the game too. So well. So that that's gonna be one of the rules they reevaluate in the offseason. I mean, then... yeah, like you said, Bear, like what's the point of the baseline? Like I, I thought it's always like uh, you know, th- there was always that rule of running outside the baseline. I don't know if there was a tech, tech technical rule for it, uh, or like uh terminology that's used for it, but uh you know, they can always call you out, like if you just if you're running from yeah. first to second and there's no force at second, but they're trying to manually tag you out, you can't just run into the outfield. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and that's why, like, when he made that statement, I was like, oh, okay. And then I went, wait a second. That doesn't make sense. And so I, I watched this play probably three or four times because I, no, I got no stake in this. And it was just like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, that's interference. Oh my God! Sam O'Man said Paul Macbeth won the U.S. Disc Golf Championship, justifying his one mil a, a one mil a year paycheck for disc golf. That that's, sounds like a I good mean one. that's pretty solid. Wow! Don't mind if I do. It's All not. Right. I can't. I can't imagine the equipment costing too much. You know, it's not like golf clubs where you're probably dropping sure. like. Well, I'm sure those uh, the discs are expensive. Yeah. Uh, one other thing that I felt like uh, was funny, and we should we should review. J.R. Smith, golfing, shows up to golf in his Bentley. Oh my goodness! <laughs> for his golf team, just being a complete legend. Like everyone's, this guy's in like that Toyota 4Runner, like their mom's <laughs> old car. He's he's rolling up in the couple hundred thousand dollar Bentley. His swing actually looks pretty decent though, too. He's been, uh, I guess, doing real well, real well. Yeah, getting a lot of publicity we talking about this at work today what does do you guys know what he's studying because he he needs to be taking some kind of classes right business ethics <laughs> ethics okay <laughs> my guess was business administration what is it uh human uh <laughs> uh like dog shit in the human dog responses. shit in the human response <laughs> Yeah, but uh, oh, this one I think he almost holds out. Ooh, oh. hits the side of the jar. But Jr. Smith doing well like and uh, rolling up his Bentley. Like I said, that's just just a comedy show. But good for him. That 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 I, it's just so surprising. Doesn't seem like the uh, to be the golfer, you know. But uh, anyways, he's doing well. Um, I have one thing that I definitely want to hear your guys' opinion. On. Mm. Let's listen to this. Oh, turn it up. How fired up does that theme song get? Is that not the best theme so song of excited. all time? Oh, so, so excited. Oh man, NHL on ESPN tomorrow night. ESPN is bringing back their NHL contract, and I personally couldn't be any more excited. John Butchergrass. Oh, I get to have to show you this lineup. Look at this lineup because I don't know if you guys have seen the full lineup, but no. they have some personalities. Studs. Yeah, they have. Butcher Grosh, Brian Boucher, Ryan Callahan, Chris Chelios, Linda Cohn, Sean McDonough, Steve Levy, Emily Kaplan, Ray Ferraro, Barry Melrose, Mark Messier, Kevin okay. Weeks. I mean, they have a lot of like uh, pretty That's strong really names cool. in there. I mean, this obviously some people I'm I'm not familiar with. Oh, Rick DiPietro. Is he still getting oh, paid no by the Islanders, Moose? 
Uh, shoot, he might be. <laughs> I think he's still getting paid. He, he's this, got the Bobby he honestly Mia might contract. be in his yeah, he might be in his last year or something. I'm actually gonna look that up because that would be him and Bobby I mean, Bonilla. Would, I think uh, they, they I would think probably they... have to avoid the uh, the non compete for him there, right? You, Maybe. you think there's some non compete clause in that contract somewhere? Yeah, him and Bobby Bonilla, they they must be they must they should just go out for a drink every year. The New York contracts <laughs> right? that they have. Oh, this that's too funny. But city. I person, I love Butcher Gosh. He's gonna announce a lot. McDonough, I think, is mm-hmm. announcing the opening game. I think it's Levy Vegas. On play by play two is good. Who's that? Steve Levy. I'm Steve play Levy. By- oh, I was just yep. looking at the play by play guys more sure. than anything yep. else. Yep. That's that's um, some talent there. In fun fact, the last time they called the game on ESPN, it was the Tampa Bay Lightning winning the cup in I think 2004. Versus yeah, four? No uh, way. the uh, Hurricanes. And the first game they will be calling is the Tampa Bay Lightning tomorrow night. So their banner raising really ceremony. Cool. And then they go out to Vegas. And I believe Bucci Gras is announcing that one. I think uh, McDonough is going to be announcing the first one. But I, I, I think this is a pretty solid, solid crew. Um, and... I don't know. I'm personally excited because just being on ESPN is just going to get publicity of hockey way up there. Oh, hey, little cub. Sorry. (laughs) And uh, they also have a new show called The Point, kind of like NHL Tonight. That'll be on ESPN as well. Um, But that should be a ton, ton of fun to uh, watch. But I couldn't be any more pumped. Any any predictions by either of you guys? Any... uh, expectations or any uh bold predictions you guys have for the season season? yeah um i don't think the kraken are gonna make the i mean now they're so i think the kraken have a better roster than vegas did but i don't want to say they're gonna make the playoffs honestly because i just don't want to see an expansion team make the playoffs in their first year again um I, I mean, I think they could. They have two good goalies and they oh, have they a lot of depth. Could. But uh, they named Giordano their captain today, which I thought, to be honest, they did a while ago because that yeah. was just the obvious choice. Zoom in a little bit, see if you guys can see that anymore. But all these, these, these are some great names here. And I mean, Barry Melrose is just a legend too. Um, oh yeah, I'm interested Baggiest to see suits. how uh, Messier. And, oh, you know who they don't have here is Torts. Torts is on on this is on yeah, this too. Uh, Torts is say, Torts right. is working there. I don't know why he's not listed there. Maybe because he's already, he already pissed off the photographer. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not proud to promote that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, should be a fantastic time. Rick Devils Dicatra's making the playoffs. Contract. Mm. I I hope so. I don't think uh, actually, the Devils make the playoffs, but I I, I like uh, uh, Jack I, I Hughes doing well this year. So I think I he's going to make a big step up, and um, not saying that because that's your name, but I do think he's going to be a, make a big next step. Uh, I'd like to think, you know, it's tough to pick against Tampa right now. Still, yeah, like it, as much as I want to, Vasilevsky, and then all the, the all the depth they have in front. I mean, I think the only competition is really Colorado, and they need their goaltending to really take a step forward. Maybe Carolina takes a step forward. They have two new goalies in Frederick Anderson and Ranta. No, is it Ranta? I forget. Uh, I don't know. They did lose Dougie Hamilton though, as uh, as Hughes points out, he is now on uh, the Devils. So. Yeah, Tampa definitely took a step back. Their depth is all uh, revamped, but they're they're you know they're gonna have a full year of Nikita Kucherov. And last time I checked, that guy's pretty pretty good. Pretty good. Rick your D Pietro's contract ended last year, 2020, 2021. Uh, uh, four point five Lucky. million dollars for a total of sixty seven and a half million dollars since two thousand six, which was the last time he played. Uh, I don't, that that's when he signed the contract. Oh it was oh six oh seven. Good for him. Well, uh, I don't have anything else uh, from the weekend. You guys have anything else uh, from this past weekend? Oh, hang on, I oh. might have lied. He's oh, still so he's still in the buyout process. Um, Gruden he saying. he's gonna paid one and a half million dollars through twenty twenty eight twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew he was still getting paid. That sounds more like it. So That's he's getting, incredible. he's double dipping right now. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. All right. Well, I never thought it was that bad. We do, uh, we do talk about some uh, TGC tours here. And we had quite a week in TGC tours. Let's start out with uh, the Platinum Tour, as we always do. And then we'll get into some community stuff. Uh, we played, uh, or well, those who participated. It's a, it's a uh, shame we don't know anyone in Plat anymore. Uh, well, you'd be surprised. There's a decent <laughs> amount. Uh, I was just taking a shot at Narwhal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, poor Narwhal. Um, our winner, Materializations, hence the name of the uh, pod materialization p is his name on playstation 4 aka Lindsay collins 54 54 52 and then mm. a measly 59 in round four four straight rounds in the 50s scud almost did this or actually brody went uh four straight 50s um, actually, there's a few people, Ailey, Gwen, so I guess that wasn't that insane, but the 54, 54, 52, that I mean, was just something Obviously, else. the 52 is incredible, and a lot of people, at least in that top six there, had some of their worst rounds in that third round, and he's just out here shooting his best at a 52. Let's take a, take a peek here. He's got a few of these clips. So he's going with very forgiving clubs. Oh, he does oh, fast okay. forward, but if you win platinum, there's going to be some <laughs> exceptions here. I mean, just look at that stretch. From ten, 9 on, birdie, 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 eagle 2, birdie, birdie, ace. Are you shit me? And then he's going into a par 5. What? Let, tell, me he birdied, <laughs> tell me he'd uh, eagled it. Oh, no. He only got... Imagine getting a 4. <laughs> he has a few other clips. This is a, this is a birdie. Must have been a long putt. Oh my god, look at this putt. Uh, 13 meters down, 24 centimeters. Interesting. It's using the metric system. That's uh, hacking. <laughs> AKA hacking. the wrong one. <laughs> the wrong <laughs> system. <laughs> Good god. Great putt there. I mean, those are going to help. How about another eagle too? Oh, this is into this uh, uphill par four, which you can reach in one. Let's see if he's actually able to stick this. I'm curious if he... Oh, he just grips it and rips it. No shot shape. Barely even looked at it. And let's knock it to about... Okay. A foot and a half. <laughs> uh, actually, it's 57 centimeters for those counting at home. <laughs> um, and then he's got one more clip. Might as well watch them all. What kind of sorcery is this? Oh, he's on the green. Okay. 10 meters up, 44 centimeters. We need Uber in here for some uh, conversion rates. Right. Yeah, I'm with Bulldog. This guy's just on another. Good Lord. Just pounding at home. What a machine. And that has to be probably, I, I don't know. I Correct me if I'm wrong, if you guys know off the top of your head. I'm sure you probably don't. He won by eight strokes. Damn. In plat. That's just insane. Just playing out of his mind. So big, big props to Lindsey Collins, a.k.a. Materializations. Um... I mean, nothing else to say other than that's some fantastic shooting and was bogey free too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eagles, zero bogeys. What was uh, putts per round like? 19, 18, 19, and then 26. <laughs> oh, wow. That blew up in round, round four. Yeah, blow up round. 100% yeah. greens. I know. His, his best greens, too. Yeah. Well, that, that'll happen, you know, like yeah, yeah, on those yeah. tough ones. It, it's weird. My, uh, I, I go to my uh, golf instructor about once a week, and I actually have only one lesson left, but uh, he was like, I hit 17 out of 18 greens this weekend, and I shot an 81 because I had 41 putts. Oh, my. But that's the thing. Like, when you hit, green, you, when you hit every green, 
Yeah. It's like you're, you're never chipping. Like, like 30, there's no, no chip putts. up and down. Like, yeah, you're constantly 40 foot putts and stuff like that. So um, when you do have high greens, I'm sure the proximity is much further away. Mm hmm. But uh, congrats to Lindsey Collins once again. All right, let's go to the uh, community corner. This was a funny clip that uh, Bear was able to grab. This is Mac. And then uh, <laughs> I haven't seen this one yet. Playing like 187. Do you guys hear this? Okay. 190 in the hand. All right, that's gonna pretty much come right up to the yeah. flag. So let's take a little bit off. Why does this wind? What did it just do? <laughs> So you probably weren't paying attention at the beginning. Then, uh, Look at this win. Oh my. Playing like 187. We got 190 in the hand. All right, that's going to pretty much come right up to the flag. So let's take a little bit off. Why does this win? He's just focusing <laughs> on the shot just shape. <laughs> just abrupt, abrupt change in wind. But I mean, so you got to look out for that. So if you are playing on, uh, yeah, 18 putts in a round, imagine. Um, if you are playing in uh, any of these competitive rounds, look out for those wind changes because those uh, those yeah, will, yeah. those will screw you up. So no actual shot there, um, but we have probably the shot of the week. I would say right here, out of all those by materializations, this one also caught by Bear may be the most impressive shot you will okay, see. Okay, that sucks because <laughs> for so many reasons, but the biggest one being I don't know how I'm gonna get this ball to get down there and stop it. So it's just look at this situation. From the heavy rough, which they classify as heavy rough, even though he's on a rock. And then look at that green. It's got to be 187s. Happens to hit it red fast, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> and. Oh. Finding the back door into the cup. You're a mute okay, there if you're talking to us. Because for so many. Oh, uh, but. Killer bees. Um, he there's a reason he's the Xbox goat, and that's one of them right there. All right, we have um this this is a familiar face. How about this guy? Birdie it pretty easily. Hey, back streaming, Moosey. Ow! Oh! Tried to dunk it, but got rejected. You deserved that. <laughs> Reject it. I swear, Moose, you have some of the most pretty, pretty clippable much. shots every single time you stream. <laughs> like, you have, like, the three hole in one day. You have albatrosses up the yin-yang. It's just, like, every yeah, time you stream, good. there's something. Oh, hang on. Hang on. We're hanging. <laughs> <laughs> it just oh, shot in the gut there. Goodness. I thought that was going to be just a terrible wow. shot off, uh, off that great fast. And I don't know thing. what happened to Lex here, but he might have got shot or something, too. <laughs> Wait, what was that? And we got a new clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. They're like bit alert or something. Uh, oh, it made my me God, that... so happy and it immediately made me think of the wild thornberries of little yep. bonnie just going <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man just a fantastic clip of lex lex playing some good golf lately <laughs> let's get it one more time <laughs> just with let's go uh, let's go <laughs> with every ounce of his body willing it up the hill Oh man! All right, up next we got uh, D Fish. He's usually s popping around these streams. Get a nice Fisher. little uh, hole here at the Jack Wagon. Oh yes, I love the green. Let's go full screen. It's probably better, right? This is more viewable. Hitting the green regulation here, or under regulation. And a forty-four footer downhill. He looks away. Oh, Did you see yeah. That? Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did, Fish. Yes, we did. Nicely done. Uh, another one of our frequent uh, people in the stream. I think he's here tonight. Mr. Dolby Diesel. 
Dobie's another one that always has like an eagle or he Albie does. or hole in that, one. Mm-hmm. What a bounce! Give it to me. Oh my! Oh, oh yeah! That, that was insane. How Just far wait. out were you from that phenomenal shot from another area? Now look into my eyes. Work on this one. <laughs> I don't know why he says it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes. Just want some eye contact. Another. I love how now he's like nods. Now look at my eyes. <laughs> he nods for like ten seconds. Oh man, I was dying laughing. Well done, Dolby. Another great hole out. This we have a new um, what's uh filter on the on Jeb I'm not stream. Professional. Oh yeah. <laughs> I saw this. I haven't seen. It. Jeb just got three birdies in a row. You know what that means? Wait for him to cut it out. Hold on. Wait for it. He the takes a little bit. It. The build is worth it. The little grin right there. It's uh, on our uh, Lex. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, look at me, I'm red hot. <laughs> <laughs> look at me, I'm red hot. <laughs> and blurry. And blurry. Great. I'm what is that? What did he use to do I that? I think he literally used like a sandwich wrap, like some plastic oh wrap or something goodness. like that. Yeah, instead of trying to figure out the texture. <laughs> instead That's of figuring great, out dude. how to actually do it. I love uh, it. All right, I got one more clip, and uh, I personally have never talked to this person before, but uh, is one of the OGs from what I heard and invented the first calculation method in putting. Oh, wow. He was playing. His name is Hippie Stein. You can occasionally find some clips on YouTube from him. But he was playing his TGC Tours Platinum Rounds. This is the 18th hole. We're going to watch this all the way to the end. Because there's two things Look I want to point wind, out. Look at this wind, dude. I know, some severe wind. I don't know why it's so bright Round in this video. One. Yeah. But that's not my screen. It's the uh, actual video. It's like he took it with his uh, phone. Okay. Decent. Are you me? And then we're going to pause right here for a minute. <laughs> anything? Notice anything else on the scorecard? Oh. Oh, the casual two aces in three <laughs> holes. Oops. <That's> incredible. <laughs> Just what a on casual. A imagine four. imagine getting a four on the par five to ruin the eagle streak. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Some nerve he had. Just a sick round. Ace, birdie, ace. He could have gone. He could have gone birdie, bird, uh, eagle, 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 though. That would have been something. But eagle, um, eagle, Albie. Mm. Yeah, excuse me. Eagle Eagle Albie. Yeah, but six under in the final two, uh, three holes. Not too shabby. It's crazy. So wait, what's the rest of the clip? Is there more? No, no, no. That, 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 oh, I just okay. wanted to, I just wanted to pause because, like, it was not just that shot, but then, like, because he doesn't have this other clip. I just happened to notice that. Like, he didn't even say anything about it. There, there's no audio in it. It's just his clips. Um, but. Just something else. Anyways, that's all the uh, clips as far as the community stuff I have, but we'll go into the Killer Bee stuff in just a minute. Let's take a quick peek. Oh, actually, that's a great time to plug. At, uh, what is it? R-F-R-T? Yeah, Red Fa I knew I knew I put those commands yeah. in there for something. Red Fast Review on Twitter. Tag us if you have any clips. I try to look through everyone's clips. Some of you guys don't, um, you know, uh, stream that off and that's fine if you do anything record it offline that's fine too send it to me l boy sent me a handheld video on his camera one time so i'd be more than happy to it uh, post it up here um yeah just let me know i can only uh you know try to look at so many things i know pat usually sends me a whole bunch of clips and then bear had a few this week moose will send in a few so we all have our eyes and ears open but find one of us Best way to do that, Red Fast Review Twitter account. So there it is right there. So give us a follow on Twitter. Yeah, located within a sea of pars. Oh, uh, nope, that wasn't the uh, link I was trying to post. One second. Let's take a quick peek. 
For those interested, which is probably not many of you, the Fantasy Golf League, I was bragging that I was in first place. Luckily, our companion here in chat, Mr. Narwhal, decided to make a cut, miss a cut last week. And um, I'm sure he was thinking about my fantasy team um, during that time, but uh, cost me some fantasy points. So I do drop to seventh. Cabot, not that he can't win much lately, um, is in first with 575 points. I guess everyone has the same players throughout the first four weeks. So for those who are playing, um, I will post the link in chat if you are interested in following on your own. But, uh, you know, it has the overall standings. Uh, Colpster did a fantastic job creating this at auto updates from TGC Tours. But uh, I don't know. Kind, kind of uh, interesting if you follow the community closely. Can you scroll down so we could uh, see a full leaderboard? Ah, oh, there's bipolar bear. <laughs> Not last. That's all that matters. Yep. Samo. Yep. Samo in chat. Only four points oh. back, Samo. You got to take down Cabot. We can't have Cabot keep winning. <laughs> Cabot wins Carpy. everything. Carpy um, at three. He so won. How does this... uh, what? I know. I know. We talked about it a little last week, but explain to me how this. So it's how it works? You're you so you draft picked... a team, right? This isn't from your. So your this was team. a salary cap based thing, and you just filled out a form and chose three players. Couldn't mm -hmm. exceed a ten million dollars salary cap. So basically, if you took Sloaner or Love Scud, which Slo I don't think anyone took Sloaner. I mean, the salaries were a little bit ridiculous on like Sloaner and Love Scud. So I don't even know if anyone took Love Scud um, because mm -hmm. trying to fit that under 10 million is so difficult. Um, but everyone submitted a team and there's your team cost. And does it have the scoring and rules? Uh, Aces are six, Albies eight, Eagles five, birdies twos, zero for par, bo bogeys negative one, doubles are worse, negative three. And then there's also bonus points awarded uh, for bogey-free tournament, 20, longest putt, 5, longest drive, 5. So that's okay. of the entire Platinum Tour tournament. It, so it, oh, so it's only plat players? Correct. Yeah, it's just the gotcha, Platinum gotcha, Tour. Gotcha, gotcha, Yep. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I personally don't know many people on this list, but, I mean, you know, you just look at the at the top of leaderboard. This is World Golf Rankings. I'm sure you you know a lot of these names. Sloaner, Love Scud. Brody Howe's been there for a while. Bradley's been there for a while. Jeff Day. Um, mm -hmm. Polak. Rip my fucking balls off. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris Adams, Rossi. All these names are very familiar. Um, but you can find some good value ones. Like I I, I went with Kara and... Uh, Kara, Phil, and Narwhal is my team. So mm -hmm. riding them That's up. Solid. Yeah. But Oh, yeah. Look at Rocket. Real Rocket's solid. still around. William Olsen. I'm pretty sure that's Rocket. Um... Anyways, uh, that's where we're at with that. One thing uh, Cabot is playing in because he's just been doing so hot is the Killer Bees Match Play Invitational 5 Championships versus Cooks Magooks. It's been a little bit since we talked about this because there's been a layoff due to some time issues. But Cabot um, and Cooks... Finally, we were able to coordinate a time this past weekend. Bear, were you comment commentating on that? I know you do some of the stuff. Were you live no. on that one? Not uh, on that one. I stay I out of the broadcast booth. I leave that for the professionals. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> you know. No, I just, there's so many great people that put a lot of time and work into it. I always feel that if you get too many cooks in the kitchen, you might get people talking over one another um, talking about golf shots. And when you have players in their chats and they're kind of talking through the shots, uh, I've would I did like course, the course reporter, the one time. So I was in Colby's chat. I was in Sloaner's chat. I was in the discord with bees and it's a lot going on within the headphones Right. So even like right now, I've got a lot going on in the headphones with two people. And then I, I apologize for everyone. As I take this off, I've got my daughter talking to me. So I just <laughs> it's not in the cards for me this year. I, I don't blame you. It's it's tough when there's that many people. But uh, as the chat's pointing out, just kind of breaking news, uh, we'll probably get more into it next week once it's uh, kind of official, if it's if that's the case. 
Our boy John Gruden, Doby's boy, apparently is out as the Raiders coach. I'm checking it. Um, so we'll have we'll have Bear check on that. But anyways, let's get to the golf talk. Um, we'll we'll reserve that for next week uh, and let the official news come out. Yeah, when rap, it's rap, time. Rap, rap report saying rap he resigned. Saying it? Yeah, wow. so that's that's official. Wow! 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 Anyways, uh, we'll find out more in detail what happened there. But let's find out more in detail about the Killer Bees match play. Uh, Cooks, so we have a sh- hole-by-hole breakdown here, which is going to be kind of cool. Cooks with uh, a nice little dart on one to well, about nine all, feet. Right? Uh, yeah. Ends up winning hole one. And this is, keep in mind, a three um, best of three matches. And this is only match one. They they only had time for one match. So that's that's all they are doing at the moment. So that dart, they were, uh, Cooks was up one through one. They both parred on two. This is our third shot. And then here's Cooks on three with a one-up lead. Cabot had just missed his chip. I believe. For the birdie. Count it. Nice little chip in there. When it Don't matters. Cocky with that. Cooks with a nice chip in there on three. So go. Cooks is up two through three. Then on four, he has another chip. Let's see what he does this time. Ooh. Wow. Misses terribly. That's that okay. looks like a More me save. or a moose chip, and immediately goes into the putt. Putt appears to be online and actually misses it. So he does give one right back on four. So he chips one in to steal one, and then loses one right back on uh, four. So Cabot is still one down through four. Here's Cabot on five. After this clip, I want you to go back to the title of this clip. Oh, I work on the to be dream, fair, I did think it? about using that slope, but... He hits a nice shot there. Not too close, but uh, Cooks was uh, far enough away. Yeah, I, I, yeah that, I was, I was <laughs> okay. typing fast. <laughs> I know. Oh, look at you. I knew that you What's could do that. that. I did not know that. Everybody learned something today. <laughs> Move to all square. There you go. Put put a nice clip on Cabot's channel. I'm sure Cooks Cooks likes me clipping his uh, miss chip and bogey to have him lose a hole too. But uh, you know, we just got we're just reporting here. I'm doing my due diligence. Yeah. So we're all square yeah. after that hole on five. This is a very difficult sixth hole, and Cooks has just put it to about 15, 20 feet downhill putt that's relatively straight. Cooks will end up making it after. But chances or the habit with a fantastic chip chip here to put the pressure on. Yeah, 15 feet, it was down an inch. Cooks does make that putt, they half that hole, but uh, some quality playing there. Uh, We move to, yeah, both both get go one up here on seven. We have a little bit of a slider, definitely not an easy putt, especially on the Hoodad 007 settings where there's no aim marker and everything, these downhill ones can be very tricky. Going towards Boom! The what a putt. You might be Great on your putt way there. To the Cooks would go one up on seven, and then on eight, he would make birdie on a par five. I don't have the clip because it was just a standard birdie on a par five. Uh, Cabot would actually par the fifth hole. Um, they both par nine, and then we have this clip here on ten, with Cabot like this next one two down at the moment. Scored down to one up. This to win the hole, little little tough slider, just not quite as hard as uh, Cooks is, but still difficult nevertheless. Let's head towards the hole. Oh, fast forward right through it, no problemo. Cabot goes to one down. They both go on a birdie spree, 11, 12, and 13. So Cabot's still one down on 14. And then we have this by Cabot. From the tee box. Tough 
touch slow. But he gets it to about hole high, very flat level putt, oh, nice. and oh, he's able to make that. And uh, Cooks actually misses the green there. They both birdie a par 5 15th hole. Pretty uh, standard easy birdies there. And then we get to 16 where we're still all square. Here on the 16th. And look at the, I don't know, do you, Bear, do you have easy, are, are you like super confident in these five yard chips? A lot of people are. Yes. You, you're I, I like super those. confident in these? Yes. Do you I, push I the feel... aim marker out or do you keep no. it like so it's restricting a little bit? No, I usually keep it uh, where I want the ball to land. Okay. And then I just kind of adjust from there. Okay. And do you actually I, hit I your tempos? Sorry, this. You're on the sixth. No, you're good. Like, do you yeah. hit perfect tempo pretty consistently on these? Like, under, I'm normally uh, under more on the fast side. You're, so okay, so like a gray I fast kind of how he did right yeah. here. So you pro he played a smidge out to the right. Okay. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to get these, and I can't do them for the life of me. I well, would I would definitely take Bear's advice because if I had like a five four or five yard chip and my lob wedge is a seven yard chip, uh, I would always push my marker all the way out and just try to partial it by feel. But now I put my marker about a yard or two before the hole, and I've been hitting them a lot more. Okay, okay, I'll have to try that. I'm pretty good at hitting the tempo with a partial. But it's just getting the right distance, and I and I can't seem to mm -hmm. gauge that for the exact number. With splashes, I don't have a problem. But anyways, Cooks goes one up on um, 16. And then we have this on 17. A chip off, then. A little chip off. Goes and Cooks off. leaves his Two. short. Cabot has a similar chip to uh, Cooks, another five-yarder. This would win the hole and tie them going into the final final hole. This is where it's tough because I don't see the aim marker. Well, this is Houdad setting, so. And <gasps> yes. Oh, wow misses on the low side they do both par 17 but that was both very close cabot even more so so cabot one down into 18 here's oh, cook's oh, eagle down. bid oh wow mm. rolls Cooks. right off the yeah. green this in anyway Cooks would then chip up. Unfortunately, does not make that. So Cabot actually had an eagle bid himself. A treacherous putt, but scary as he just saw Cooks go off the green. And this one could easily go a little too fast as well. But. No way. Let's just, let's just get the eagle anyways. So. Who knows if he would have made it if the pressure was on, but that tied it. He w only needed to make that in two putts on 18. Um, but that ties it, forcing a playoff hole. And then we have the finish on the first playoff hole out of the heavy rough. Look at this shot by Cook. 70, 71 to 78%. Keep in mind, these are all like very firm, very fast greens. Hits into the false front, kicks it up, rolls out to about two feet, maybe well three done. or four. But uh, Cabot could not match him there, and Cabot was just over the green, misses chip, I believe, and Cooks would win and take round numero, uh, or match numero one of the series. But anyways, a very uh, fun series to watch. And I'm going to shout out um, Killa Bees 132. I think that's right. Um, that's where you're going to find it. I don't believe they have it scheduled yet. This was on a Wednesday. Saturday. Oh, it is Wednesday. Good to know. That That's the plan. Again, the, the scheduling is insane with... A, a massive time difference of West Coast in England and then 
top it off with, you know, life. And I'm pretty sure Cooks is going on vacation this weekend. So they're yeah. trying to get everything. I give props to uh, Cabot for, you know, that these matches are all midnight or 1 a.m. or it's late for him. Right. Yeah. So, so tip of the cap. Yeah, tip of the cap to him, tip of the cap to Cabot and Bees and all the people that make it happen behind the scenes. I know, uh, you know, that it, it, it takes a lot to coordinate this and to have it at the same time. And you really want these final matches to go on at the same time. You don't want to, the people to just submit scorecards like they did earlier in the rounds because the, the live match play where you see it go back and forth like this, it, it, the adrenaline rushes and roller coaster rides are, are really awesome to watch. Because if you're just playing by yourself, that chip, chip miss chip in or whatever doesn't mean much. But when you have a little chip off or something, yeah. it's kind of cool to follow. So much added pressure. And then, you know, this shot where it's a birdie, like, who knows? Like, yeah, Cabot could have easily birdied from the middle of the fairway. But, you know, this this from, what was this? Heavy rough from 130 out. I mean, that ain't an easy shot. Tailwind, you know, you get a lot of factors playing in, and you don't have scout cam either, so you can't really dial in on the exact, you know, line. But, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, they've played this course a bunch of times leading up to it. But Oh, that's of... the de definition of clutch is yeah. that clip right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, 130 yards out, sticking it to two feet in the playoff hole. Um, I keep saying two. It might have been four, but whatever. Anyways, um, yeah, so look out for that on Wednesday, uh, Killer Bees, that's the channel you'll find it on. You'll also find it on either Cabot93 or, uh, uh, God, I forget, uh, the, Cooks the Cooks Books Book. PGA um, is the Cooks's um, channel as well, so they'll they'll live stream it, but definitely on Killer Bees' channel, um, does a fantastic job with that. Um, any other thoughts on the Killer Bees match play? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to follow it too closely outside of what we talk about. Uh, but yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to kind of, and it, it's been a few weeks too. I mean, it was more into you know more mm -hmm. entertaining when it was just back to back to back to back. You know those, you know it's kind of like March Madness. It's like yeah, the yeah, Thursday yeah. Friday of March Madness when every single team plays and it's like three games on at once. That's when it's chaos. And then, like, once you get to the Final Four or, like, the Elite Eight, like, the Elite Eight weekend, Sweet 16 weekend, I bet you it does half the ratings of the initial weekend because everyone still has their brackets on the initial weekends and stuff mm. like that. But, mm -hmm. all right. I um, mean, that, that's just it. This this started the week before TGC because or it might have been two weeks because we yeah. started it not knowing what the TGC settings are. We are now into the third Correct. week of the TGC season. Correct. So that's why I think just how long it dragged out for the last final four championship. It lost some of the steam that it had because this did bring a big fire back into the community and then TGC, you know, sure. switching their settings, another... It was just that know, snowball log. effect all within mm -hmm. like a three, four week period between these Houdad setting. Like it was probably like two months ago when Houdad create like had those settings initially where we started playing on pro. Oh. Hold on. Moose, what happened? Let's talk it through. Uh, tie ball game, top of the eighth, five Let's five. Go! Rays Let's have a guy go! on second. Let's go, no Rays! <laughs> yeah. Oh man, has eight pitches and like three earned runs. Oh man, oh, um, man. but yeah, the who dad set uh, you know using pro swing, and then you know a lot of the so societies picking it up, and then TGC tours this turn this tournament. It was all one after another, um, but. One thing that I said I was going to do, and I did last week, hopefully this week will have better success. I already have my audio recorded, so we won't run into any issues. But I do have a Plat Tour preview. Um, thanks to uh, Fox, he was able to guide me through some instructions on how to do an actual flyover um, on PC. So that was kind of cool. 
I still have to tinker with it and get uh, a little bit better, um, but this is this week's course, the Pastimes Club, for... Oh, we've played that, haven't we? We have. That was last, la it was last year's tournament. Uh, Sloaner won it, um, but it was on Platinum, and it was actually a Barstool tournament at one point, so it's been played quite a bit. Uh, oh, let me just get the video up here. Welcome to this week of the Plat Tour. Let's... Uh... All right, and here we go. The debut of the Pastimes Club. You will be able to find this on YouTube after the fact. Um, and I will try to post them all on YouTube when uh, I, I get them. Welcome to this week of the Plat Tour Preview. Week 3 of the 2022 TGC Tour season. The DJ Cup at the Pastimes Club. Designed by Brian Petty. This is heavily influenced by Paso Tiempo Golf Club in Santa Cruz, California. The par 72, 69, 54... I also must say I'm pausing it right now, and you should be able to hear me. My microphone yeah. is moving, so hopefully you can hear me on stream as well. But I learned a new word as well, a barranca, as you will hear. <laughs> the yard course winds through rolling hills and features holes over, along, and around a barranca that cuts through the middle of the property. The dramatic landscape lends itself to heavily undulating fairways, wild greens, and lots of strategic shot making. Host of the 2021 Houston Championship, which was won by Sloaner. This tournament, we kick it off on the first hole here. For the fairway kicks hard to the left, so a carefully placed tee shot here is imperative for scoring. Second shot should be a wedge or a short iron. However, the tiers are very small, so good luck if you miss. Hole 2 is a shorter par 5 by the book, clocking in at under 500 yards. However, it is straight uphill. Uh, climbing the whole way. Long drivers shouldn't have a problem clearing the second bunker on the left uh, with a good tempo unless you run into some serious headwinds. If you find the fairway, you'll have a medal up to the green and a chance at, chance at it in two, but good luck holding the tier if you're trying to stay on as this green once again has some harsh runoffs. Hole three is a longer par four. The bunkers on the left can be carried with a long tee shot under the right conditions, but be careful to not fall off the right side. This green is a bit more forgiving, as it is two tiers with everything fading towards the right. Hole 4 was the only hole to play over par in last year's Houston Open. This long par 3 is challenging. It is a very big green, but with the long tee shot in, you'll have a tough time getting it to roll out just the right distance to give yourself a bid at birdie. Hole 5 is an interesting one, a short par 4 that has a large valley about at about 260 to 285 yards. If conditions allow it, you can try to carry it and leave yourself a shorter pitch in. Choose to lay up and you will have a short iron into the green with some very small tiers. Hole 6 is the second par 3 on the front. An uphill climb of 40 pitch. plus feet plus the 180 yards in the false fronts that you'll have to carry to make that will all make for a tough shot into the green. Hole 7 is your second par 5, another uphill climb. This one has some lovely fairway bunkers that everyone adores right in the middle of the fairway. In most conditions, you will be able to carry them with a good drive and leave yourself a chance to hit the green in two. Definitely your best shot for an eagle on the front nine. The eighth hole is all about navigating the fairway bunkers. If you can find the fairway, you will have a great chance to score with a wedge into the green. It is downhill, and the bunkers in the middle of the fairway shouldn't come into play unless strong winds prevail. Ninth hole is an interesting short par 4, probably not reachable, but you can definitely fire a drive into one of those greenside bunkers on the left. And maybe, if you're lucky, you could bounce onto the green and have a look at an eagle. Either way, definitely a birdie hole to close out the front. As we start out the back 9, we move to the 10th, a scenic par 4 over that barranca as previously described, 
The conservative player will drive to the left side of the fairway with the shorter carry. The more aggressive player will attack that right side fairway, leaving themselves a short wedge in. Miss hit, and you could cost yourself as you could go OB. 11th hole is the shortest par 3, but don't let it fool you. It is very much a challenging hole with some harsh slopes on the green. A carefully shaped shot in will set up a birdie off. 12th hole is scorable. It is a uphill par 5 once again, uh, but bunkers in the middle of the fairway will likely have all players aiming to the left. The approach shot into the green is relatively friendly as you can go to the right side of the green. However, it is a very small green, so actually hitting it in two presents a strong challenge. 13 is another one of those forked carries that's pretty sizable. Tailwinds can make for an easy carry with a good drive. However, strong prevailing wind in the face, you may be forced to lay up. And going into that barranca will cause serious trouble. Choose to lay up and you'll have a very long second shot. However, this is one of the more friendlier greens on the course. 14 is a very, very challenging short par 4. It is substantially uphill, so it is not reachable. A very tricky fairway to hold, as it's narrow and harshly sloping. The second shot will be a very challenging uphill shot, and if you miss it short, be ready for a very long ride, about 30 to 40 yards back down into the fairway. I took 15th that hole the is the last par 5. Hit a good tee shot, and you'll likely be short of those bunkers, as you can see my avatar right there. This green is also near impossible to hold as you have everything harshly sloping off to the left. You will see many balls funnel off that way and players can use that right side fairway to try to trickle down towards some of the pins. 16th hole, get ready for the long drive competition here. You will see some absolute bombs in great conditions here. Those left side bunkers can be carried and if you do Get ready for a big ride as it all slopes downhill, as you can see my avatar and where I'm hitting from. You'll see some that even go 400 plus yards. 17 is the final par 3, and it's definitely a challenging one. Not too many birdies will be found here. Uphill with a severe false front. Your best bet is to hit it long and back your way into the hole. We close it off on a long par 4, not friendly for scoring. The fairway narrows significantly over the left side bunker where most, most tee shots will be found. An approach will be played from that valley uphill into this green. Best of luck at pastimes. All right, and that is your Plat Tour preview. I liked using the uh, scout cam this week. Hopefully you guys... At least Plat Tour players maybe have found that uh, helpful or anyone that is interested. I think one thing, uh, one reaction, and tell me from you guys' perspective um, to make it better. I, de I definitely should have some background music on that. It was too, uh, th there wasn't enough background music at all. I feel like there just should be something in the background, but hopefully I can yeah, try I to make these a little bit better. Yeah, I that's a bad idea. Um, but any, any I constructive criticisms, definitely let me know. I think even with the newer courses, or uh, I'd probably tab on to that uh, what the green speeds are. Mm. Ah, okay. I, I don't, I don't know what you had those on, but God, I was having Vietnam flashbacks of <laughs> all of those fire ant putts, and you miss a putt, it rolls all the way down into the fairway, and yeah, I remember fourteen. You know, I, I put 14. a little bit of backspin on one of my shots, and this thing rolled like, like I landed past the flag stick, spun it, and it just trickled past the front of the flag, like maybe one or two squares, and then it just kept going and going and going, and then I had like a forty-yard shot uphill back into the green. It was like you've got to be kidding me. So let, some of these greens are very, very harsh. Um, yeah, yeah. As Narwhal said, he made double on fourteen. So th this th week, <laughs> I would imagine. Oh, uh, fuck? It's oh yeah. Let me. Uh, sorry, I probably have them very loud at the moment. Um, 
I just turned down the volume on my end. Um, oh, my bad. Yeah, well, I had to turn it up for the video. I didn't realize when I created it, I was I was low myself. But um, yeah, those those greens can be very deadly. So you will see a lot, lot, lot of doubles, um, which is kind of weird because that as I don't know where this word came from, but the baranka um, comes into play if you miss hit a tempo. You know, if you have bad wind into the face or something like that, that that comes into play. And I know a lot of plat players like to play aggressive and they want to challenge, get to that, you know, that good approach landing area. So um, the risk reward here really comes to play. Um, but we are playing on pro swing territory, so you're not going to have too many missed, missed tempos on, on plat tour, I would imagine. Um I forgot about fantasy or else I would have put some more effort. Yeah. Yeah. Next time. Can you think about us who drafted you now? Well, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Noted. Oh man. Anyways. Um, so yeah, I'm going to post that to the YouTube. I will post this. If you guys are watching either on YouTube right now, uh, come follow me on Twitch. Uh, you'll find us here every Monday night around eight 30 or so. We've been running a little long, so uh, I think we'll wrap it up shortly you guys have anything uh going on this week or anything else uh you want to talk about the plat tour this week not plat uh but i'm goaltending three times this week i'm still working on like an audio setup for the camera so i've i've tried two or three different mics and right now here's what i get to use for the audio a nice old iPhone, but it won't hold the charge now. So uh, working on that, uh, and then we got a wedding Saturday. So Ooh. Ooh. close by. You staying at home? Are you staying there? I don't know. <laughs> Cross that bridge when we get there. So yeah, I'll figure so it out. Plan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what about you, Moose? You doing anything good? Uh, oh, we get the home opener on Sunday at three o'clock. Little matinee game. So very excited for that. Um, when is it? Sunday at three. Oh, the home opener. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, they're playing before then, right? No, they had a preseason game. Uh, what's today? Friday. They had a preseason game October. Friday. October. No that kidding. I thought I thought the Bruins' first game was sooner, but I'm was... I'm talking. Sorry, I'm talking about uh, Utica. Oh, yeah. The Bruins. The Bruins. We all play. follow Utica. <laughs> the Bruins play Friday. Well, you asked me what I had going on. True, true. I understood. What are you doing for the actual game? Like, do you, do you work it? It uh, it varies. So the preseason game, uh, we were selling tickets because there's going to be those people that buy tickets at the door, um, and then walking around, you know, meeting season ticket holders we've talked to. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so it's a networking event type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's good. Um, I will be for what I'm doing. I'm going to be streaming tomorrow. Um, got my TGC stuff. So Moose, I don't know if you're going to be joining. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So probably Moose and Monk. Um, we'll play that. You want to um, take a little sneak peek where the cut's at? Cause I had like an 11 under sure. practice round. So I'm kind of scared of like a 30 under cut. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kilbride, how's uh, Madden been going? Madden's been going well. I uh, actually, that's probably where we'll go after this. We'll go see Pleated because uh, it looks like M is just wrapping up. But, uh, or oh, we're not going to actually know the cut moves until oh. tomorrow. Let's go. Yeah. Moose just uh, found yep. out that uh, Moose, the you're kinetic a fucking cut play was by play 14. person. Can you yeah. explain what the <laughs> fuck you're watching? Because well, none of us can see it. I don't think anyone cared um we don't but still explain it so verdugo hit a sharp ground ball to the shortstop had to make a cross body not really jumping throw but definitely off balance uh wander franco too rare to see from him pretty much just bad throw to first base pulled Choi off the bag and now verdugo's at second because the ball went out of play uh with noah it's in the bottom of the eighth inning in a 5-5 game there we okay. go moose there we what go. What up, Nova? Glad you could pop in, man. Nova. We are just Holy wrapping shit. up. But uh, yes, this will be on the VOD, or you can catch it on YouTube. 
Um, but we're gonna wrap up. We're gonna go say hello to Mr. Pleated Pants, as Bear just asked me. Um, Bespoke Football League is off and running. I am. Uh, I have yet to play a, a user game in PC. I am three and zero there. I did play uh, a user game in PS5, and I did lose 45 to 43. And I normally play a defensive Man, game. I was down 28-7 came back to go up 43 42 and then he kicks a last second field goal to beat me um it was actually advertised as pleated's game of the week and he uh mm. did some commentary on it and is on his youtube channel i sent in a clip to a red fast review of some of your oh, madden yeah. play yeah. he did of of what some of your madden play chris sale is warming up in the bullpen oh boy let's let's look at this before the rain kicks off I'm scared. Titled, What Do We Want? Uh, let's go to... A few seconds here. Oh, yes, Big D! <laughs> what do we want? Oh, yes, Big D! <laughs> See you guys next time. Ciao. Say hello to Pleated.